Hello, my name is Stan. My wife and I are located about 20 miles south of Twin Falls, Idaho. Welcome to my utility room. Our system is built around a Pellet Duo 40 from MB Tech. Why MB Tech? Initially, it was because it was the least expensive pellet boiler available by far. The next least expensive boiler was more than twice the cost, almost three times the cost. However, since installing it a little over three years ago, I can add that it has been virtually trouble-free. I'm very happy with this boiler. Now, depending on where you live, you may have a problem with your local building code since these boilers are not EPA certified. At least that was the case in 2019 when I bought. Fortunately, the building department in Twin Falls County is much more flexible than others I've encountered over the years. The boilers do comply with the European emissions regulations, and the local inspection department felt that meant it was probably cleaner than EPA requirements, so they okayed the installation. I've recently seen on MB Tech's website <clears throat> that there are currently systems installed pretty much all across the country. So that must mean that most people are not having a problem with local building codes, or they're now EPA certified. But it would be a good idea to check before you run down this path. But you may also ask, why a pellet boiler? There are two reasons for that selection. One is that when I started designing this system, of the available fuels, pellets were considerably cheaper than oil or electricity. And two is that I learned that pellets provide a significantly smaller carbon footprint. Today, pellets have become more popular and the cost has risen to about the same as oil, but there's still a significantly smaller carbon footprint with pellets. I started designing this system in 2016, about two years before I retired. I started that early because I knew absolutely nothing about radiant heat systems. I knew that a lot of research would be necessary in order to build a satisfactory system. Fortunately, there is a lot of information available on the internet that I was able to use. In April of 2018, when I retired, we moved here to the Twin Falls area where we have built our retirement home. Now we built slab on grade. So we have uh, concrete floors throughout. We have about 3000 square feet of living space and an attached 40 by 70 foot shop, which is another almost 3000 square feet and our radiant system includes the shop. Winters are cold enough here that I didn't want to be constrained from working out in the shop due to the temperature. That portion of the system is fully installed, but we have not yet been able to use it since we have not yet insulated the shop. We're doing a construction ourselves, and that item has not yet risen to the top of our priority list. Okay, let's take a closer look. The main components of the system consist of, of course, the boiler. By the way, these are the concrete floors I talked about. Um, the ones on the rest of the house look a lot better. These have been a bit abused over the years here. This is the, the MB Tech Pellet Duo 40 and the accompanying hopper over here. The hopper looks a little different than what I see on their website today, but Functionally, it's the same device. Uh, also over here, I have in this insulated box, I have a 245 gallon thermal storage tank. And this is a small controller, an expensive but small controller that controls the valve that it's sitting on. Uh, and its sole function is to uh, <clears throat> basically help the boiler, pardon me, help the boiler fill that storage tank. Uh, in so doing, um, this controller makes sure that the return, cold water return to the boiler does not drop below 120 to 130 degrees. Uh, that's to make sure that uh, the moisture that's in the uh, flue gases does not uh, condense in the stack. Uh, these boilers are non-condensing boilers, uh, which means they have no protection against uh, moisture 
that condenses in the stack, uh, drains back down the stack and into the boiler. Those, uh, that moisture is highly acidic and it will eat your boiler in a couple of years. So that's the sole purpose of this controller here is to make sure that the return temperature is adequately hot. Uh, as the boiler heats up, this valve will be operated and uh, hot water will be sent through this pipe to the top of the storage tank over there. Okay, um, here you see one distribution manifold. There are four similar manifolds throughout this building. Uh, there's its attendant pump. Um, I've put a uh, high temperature filter in the hot supply line um, here, and I've put another one over there. Um, this is to make sure that uh, rust or any other impurities that are in the uh, boiler water are not spread throughout the entire system. And that seems to be working rather well. Uh, <clears throat> this five port manifold here serves the north half of our living quarters and halfway down through the living quarters uh, wing is, a, uh, is another four port uh, manifold which takes care of the south half of the living quarters. Uh, the reason for doing that is that uh, all of the loops here are plumbed with this red half inch PEX that you see here. Um, and with a half inch diameter PEX, your loop length is constrained to 300 feet. Uh, <clears throat> and some of these loops are far enough away, some of the zones are far enough away from this utility room that uh, you use up 300 feet uh, of PEX tubing just getting there and back. So I split the manifold and moved the other one closer to its, uh, closer to the zone areas it addresses. And um, in this case, over here, going down through the floor, uh, behind this wastebasket, these are the, uh, the supply and return lines um, that supply the uh, hot water to that other manifold. And the same is true over here in the shop area. Here's a five port manifold here. Uh, and there's another one halfway down to the shop uh, that takes care of the south, hand, and south half of the shop. And there are the supply and return tubes to and from that manifold. Okay, in addition to that, we have the control system over here on the wall. Now, don't be scared. You don't need to do this. Um, in fact, I don't know that you need to do any of this. Um, this whole system, including the relays in this box, um, control all the zone valves and all the pumps. I don't know if you can read the labels on those relays, but these first nine over here uh, control the zone valves and these four control the four pumps uh, that are used in the system. And this device here, a PLC, uh, known as a uh, programmable logic controller, is what controls these valves and it reads the thermostats that all land right here on this terminal block. They're connected through this cable over here down to the input module on the PLC. And we have a 24 volt transform up there to supply the thermostats with power. So the PLC reads the thermostats, or at least reads when the thermostats are demanding heat and it's programmed to know which zone relays over here to operate uh, depending on which thermostats are asking for heat. Now you don't need to do this, uh, especially now. Uh, MB Tech has zone, zone valve controller modules that uh, should make this processing qu quite easy. Um, in actual fact, um, once you have decided which zones you want open, when a particular thermostat demands heat, you will probably never ever change that. 
and I probably never ever will either. But the reason I put this controller in here is because, well, one thing, that's what I did when I was working. Uh, I used to build a lot of systems with these controllers. But the primary reason I wanted to do it, uh, not only because I think that sort of thing is fun, but because I can connect this uh, uh, to a computer uh, via an ethernet cable that's in my office inside. And I can create a program that will let me see everything that's going on out here, which zone valves are open, which pumps are running, uh, if there's an alarm, what is it, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But uh, that's actually not necessary anymore. You can still accomplish that now because MB Tech has a module available that interfaces your boiler controller here to the internet. So you can get all the information you need, need to know about your your control system via a computer or even on your smartphone. And you can even can control some of the functions of the, of the boiler, which is a pretty great idea in my opinion. Okay. Um, one thing that's different here in my, on my boiler is this pellet feed tube here. If you're familiar with the boilers, you may realize that the original uh, feed tube is kind of a corrugated thing, which is far more pl flexible than this one. But I had a problem early on with getting log jams, pellet log jams in my feed tube. And of course, the boiler would then shut down. So this is actually a piece of some sort of uh, food processing hose. Uh, it's pretty expensive stuff. I think this uh, three foot section cost me 30 or $40. But it's absolutely smooth inside and the uh, log jam problem has gone away. Now, these here are the zone valves that are controlled by the control system we just looked at. Um, <clears throat> and these, um, these were made by Kalefi, and I've noticed on uh, Ambitech's website that they are selling one that is virtually identical to this one, and I have no doubt that it functions in the same way. Uh, if you ever want to test one of these things, uh, be advised that uh, when you apply 24 volts to them, either AC or DC, they will not immediately change state. These things operate on, a, on an internal heater. There is a, an expanding wax of some sort that when heated up, uh, opens the valves. So they take, uh, well, uh, the specifications on these valves is they take three minutes to open. Um, so if you're testing the valves, you're going to have to wait about three minutes and see if it works. Um, there's an indicator. This round circular part you see in the top here uh, will start to rise, and there's a green band around it on this one. And it looks like on MB's zone, MB Tech Zone valves, they have a similar indicator. Um, over here, we have a expansion tank um, because this system... Uh, between the Mondo tank over here and um, the nearly 6,000 uh, feet of, uh, of uh, PEX tubing that's in the floors um, is about 300 gallons worth of water. And the difference between 300 gallons of hot water and 300 gallons of cold water is um, quite a bit of volume. So this expansion tank allows for that expansion. Um, I think that's about it, but all we can say about the system, um, there's a lot of other stuff in here. My, my uh, thermal jacket and pressure tank is in here, well controller, uh, there's where my Wi-Fi comes in, here's where my well comes up through the floor, got a bit of a gravel filter here, um, and then it passes up over the ceiling down the other side here where it hits our uh, water softener, we have uh, exceedingly hard water here. So I hate these ion exchange water softeners, but after research found it's the only way to go. But following the uh, water softener, I placed another filter because I've read stories about how these things, they're full of little tiny uh, plastic beads that are supposedly well-contained, but apparently sometimes they're not. And people have had uh, 
these tanks fail and allow those beads to get loose and flood their entire water system. So I said, okay, here's some cheap insurance. Down here in the wall is a hot water re recirculation pump because, uh, well, for instance, the master bath is nearly 100 feet away from here. So I wanted hot water there um, whenever I was ready to take a shower without having to wait an hour and a half for it to get there. Um, typical hot water tank, of course. A uh, bit of an expansion tank on that. Um, oh, and over here in the corner, we have a reverse osmosis filter system. This filters the water that goes to the refrigerator. So the drinking water available at the refrigerator and the ice cubes that it makes are pretty doggone clean. Okay, I think that's about all I can say about uh, the madness that goes on in here. Uh, again, this boiler has proved entirely uh, reliable and I've been very, very happy with it. Thank you for watching, folks.